Hello, I am Beverly Brossman. I'm the daughter of Edna Modernis. Um, I recently on Saturday had an accident here in Strasbourg because there are no reflectors where the culprits are. When you come off of Main Street there, there's like a ditch and there's a culprit there. And I was going to get turned into the alley to go to a yard sale and there was a truck coming and he went over as I was going to turn my car, my car hit the culprit and went down a little bit into the yard. Uh, I talked with a lady and she said a half an hour before that, another lady had an accident. And two days before that, a gentleman had an accident with his truck where it went down and he had to have somebody pull him out. Okay. I don't know the name of the road. Okay. So. If oh, look, if you're going to stay for the full meeting, please connect with me. If you can pinpoint it, I'll make sure that uh, oh, yes, whether it's yes. me what and Butch they need is they need those big the, tall the, the sticks like they do out on yeah. the back roads to Newman's Town. Yeah. So if, especially if there's a problem area, if you can yeah. if you can tell yeah. me somewhere that has a high yeah. rate. Is... I, fortunately, I didn't have damage other than my wheel, but it could have. Now I don't know what the other lady's damage was. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, if you if you're planning on staying the whole time, yes. Me and Butch, if you can point it out where it is, we'll look at it. We'll. So that's an easy enough thing to oh, do. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for letting us know. Uh, Al. Al Ferrandino. I got a couple of complaints about the Lake, Lake River manure coming through town from outside the township. We got Lake manure coming through town from Richland and two miles beyond Richland coming through town and stink everything up. I mean, if it's that bad, it's, it's not good for your health, number one. I'm sure they can put something in those lagoons that they have to kill the smell when they're peeing it out. You know what I mean? My daughter don't come down here for, for that spread manure because she can't breathe. Okay. Uh, I'm concerned about that. You know, mm -hmm. some of the farmers don't like it, but you know what? I can't help for that. Yeah, so we can look I come first. We can look and see if there's anything that can be done. Unfortunately, if they are hauling and spreading legally, there's yeah, okay, they haul it. They don't even put they put it on the field three or four times uh, in a row in the winter time. They never just get on there. Hmm. They are supposed to put it out there, unless they change it, I don't know. Put it out there and then they gotta disc it under. So yeah. it stays right there instead of run off when it rains into the creek. Yeah, but again, if, if they're doing something that isn't right or isn't legal, then I mean, absolutely. Been, this, but... this has been happening for Coons ages now, mm -hmm. all the time, every time they do that. Okay. Yeah, well, okay, we can put a line out to the DEP and make sure that... Yep. The health department has got to do something about it, mm -hmm. period. Okay, yeah, well, uh, it takes me no time at all to send a letter. I'll be happy to do now, that. What out. about the sewer business here? I just read something here. We're still dragging this dead horse around. So... Because of the plan being submitted, and that's actually one of the agenda items, we'll go through that in, in much greater detail. Because the plan was submitted, there's certain things that we're legally kind of under the gun about. While we're kind of on that implementation schedule, because we have a long period of time in which we're, we're looking for funding, uh, we're also doing things that support the plan, but also support our position on maybe lack of need, lack of affordability to better prove our case if we do actually have to take this to any sort of court in the future. That way we don't have uh, essentially, um, I don't want to say hearsay, but uh, unsubstantiated fact or, or thought. We actually would have scientific data in which to stand on to say, here's our position, here's our argument, and here's why. Just got the plan recalled. I mean, he, he's doing all this work here and get, get all this big anything. money. He's huh? not pointing me. I'm not doing anything on the sewer plan. Well, yeah. Whatever's going on, they should have been they should have been recalled way back yeah. away. Instead of horsing around and just wait and then we get screwed at the end. Thank you. Yeah, we, we can't. Huh? We can't recall the plan unless you want the taxpayers to pay a three hundred dollar day fine, the plan can't be recalled. Well, I'm I'm sure there's something could be done. And we're doing it. We're working on it. I but mean we, it's, it's... But, but we can't recall the plan. We've tried, we've talked to the DEP, we can't recall the plan. Yeah, doing, doing a hard fall on the plan, enters in, and there's a number of court cases that did other, other places it, did similar right. and it did not go well. We had this issue with the DEP before. Yep. That was, right? Yep. And they, they kind of 
Cover it up like the Democrats are doing. Cover everything up. Well, they've already sent us a notice. If we weren't compliant with one of the, it was the, uh, the requisites, it was the, the they were ready to, to start fining us $300 a day. If we do our hard pull, you have to go through the plan process, the advertising process, the public hearings. It's going to cost $300 a day hey. for every day. This township does not have that kind of money. And the DEP can deny that if, if, when, so when we get to that all stage. The money that comes in here? But you want a copy of the budget? I mean, I'll give you the budget. And on the road except making bumps. I'll give you a copy of the budget. You know what I mean? We, still, we gotta start cutting the fat a little bit. There, and, there's and, there's and no fat. There's, there's not any me. fat to cut out. Yeah, there's nothing. There's, it's a, a very, very lean budget. I, maybe somebody's getting overpaid. No one's getting overpaid. Yeah. We're not getting paid. Yeah, so we're not. We're not taking any money for anything. He's getting paid. The lawyer's He's getting, getting paid, paid for the services that they perform. Um, it's got a, you know, we got a money. This road there is so bad that Jesus Christ, you can't even drive over. Yeah, and we that's gotta go around the, 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 the stuff. That's something that we're oh. regrettably painfully aware of. But the best way to roll it, that when they pull McAdam down, they roll it down the and start to make a, a lump there. So we actually we have a, a tamper that we got fixed. So as we start doing cold patching or go to do cold patching again. Uh, we'll actually be able to tamp rather than driving over with the truck, which is mm -hmm. crude but effective. But an actual like blacktop hot asphalt roller is a very expensive piece of equipment. We don't have even if we, we had the money for it, we don't get, have... get one. So the roads are better than, than okay. but, what it is. So, so in, in a brief nutshell, about six hundred thousand dollars comes into this township. About four hundred thousand or more goes towards the roads almost every single year. We've already budgeted mm -hmm. close to two hundred and fifty or three hundred thousand yeah, four roads this 50. year alone. <laughs> but then we got to stop these big heavy trucks coming through town that they're wrecking the roads. It's it's not so much about the truck traffic, Al. It's about the the underlying structure you know, of the roads. Our I've roads. I see them come down for down past my place there, man. It, it just it jars the whole house. It, the house shakes sometimes. Yeah, I mean, large truck traffic certainly doesn't help. It puts more wear and tear on the road, but. But that's not really the functional issue that we have with our roads. We got to get that done for this township. Okay. Well, down near the tennis court. Now, how long did that spin like that? With it, one, of, one over here? It's like a washboard when no, you that's... come around the bend up in the hill. You where? Got, you, know, you know the tennis court? Offhandedly, no, I don't know what you're referring to. It's right down here. Oh, you're talking like out, out here? Yeah, oh, okay. We only okay. got one tennis court. Well, that's, uh, I didn't, there's not really a road directly. <laughs> Directly next to the tennis that road there when you come up over the hill there geez right yeah there's there's a couple like um the other side of uh i guess that's uh is that sheridan um, like when you go further and it's got all the trees that overhang oh, it i think yeah that that road is more pothole than it is road but uh, yeah. we've talked about this a number of other times that uh even if we were to resurface that there's there's underlying issues with the road it's not as simple in some cases just putting blacktop over it you have situations where you're going to have thaw and freeze and you have grading problems with the roads. It's very, very, very expensive to do. It might be expensive, but I'm sure we can get grants to work or not. Any any of the things that we can chase for grants, we absolutely do, whether it's dirt and vol low volume gravel road, any number of other things. But the grants aren't as plentiful as they used to be. Yeah. And they weren't even that plentiful to begin with. Right. If you look in the draft, there should be the numbers for all the projects that we are doing this year. Just, just do the math and add it up. There's just not a ton of money to do this stuff. I'm just saying, yeah. my taxes went up. Mm -hmm. town my town town township, 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 went township. township school, taxes, school tax went township. up. Township did not. not. Township. But hell, you know, we got to get something done here. Okay, yeah. we don't disagree with you, but we're trying to work with what we've got. There's, the, a, there's the only so much we can do. Bad. I mean, yes, just think. Yeah, I, it's. I think you're. I'd say you're, you're preaching to the choir on that one, Al. We know, but there's only you, so you know, much. If you, if you run a company with a grader mm -hmm. and grade the roads, take it down to a level point and get rid of all these humps on the road from the McCann that was put on there, it'll be much better and probably cheaper. Uh, see, our, our roads, uh, it's, it's easy to say that, Al, but that, that would not work for the roads that we have. Because even if you did that, there's not much road surface there. And if you try to do like an oil and chip overlay, it's, it's just going to come off. It's got to be better than what we got now. It's yeah. got to be better. You just, it's got to be yeah. smooth. Just continuing the same problem. Yeah. That's what it is. But then, yeah. and, you know, 
I'm going to just fix it up a little bit, Tommy, do a section. Well, that's, well, that's, that's, that's what that's we're that's trying to do, Al. Today. But yeah. like a, a one mile of road, like school road is a perfect example to do a one mile full depth rec reclamation. This was probably 10 or 12 years ago that they did this. It was $400,000 for one mile of road. We have like easily more than like between 20 and 30 miles of road in the township. That's a, that's a huge number to do a full, you, you don't have to on do it. it all one time. Well, exactly. I mean, think, it's, it's, just think about it this way. If you if you had to do one mile, plus a third of a mile every year, you wouldn't go from one end of the township to the other for about 30 years. And by the time you reach one end of the, the, the township, you're going to have to start all over again. Like, it's budget is simply not there, Al. I, I get what you're saying, and I agree with you, but it's just... Down here where Bennett lives, mm -hmm. that little stretch of road there, mm -hmm. that was done about seven, seven eight years ago. Maybe longer, and it's still in good shape. Yeah, your your where life varies. Some places you could actually maybe get thirty years out of a road. Most places anymore, you're not seeing that. I've actually talked to one of the pen dot reps about this, and most places you're getting between fifteen, maybe twenty if you're lucky. For <clears throat> when you do it like the real the real right way to do it, rather than just like oil and chip isn't wrong, but it's that oil it's, and chip it don't mean nothing. Okay. You take that road going going to Green Dragon, going up the hill uh, on the other side of Newman stuff. They all and chipped that road there. Mm -hmm. Now it's just as bumpy, it's just mm -hmm. as many holes there was before because it's not sealing the holes. Right. We yeah. want to do things and we want to do it right, but you gotta have the money to do it right. And that's you, the problem you, that you we're at. Put a band -aid, you put a band -aid don't stick on. Exactly. Yeah, that's the, we we're, we're, we're saying so the same thing. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah, certain, right. certain, yeah. certain right. roads like the ones that we did this past year were good candidates for it because they didn't have a huge number of underlying problems. They were getting to the point where they would. They didn't have a high degree of alligatoring. They didn't have potholes. So the oil and chip is going to be a good thing that will pre preserve the, the lifespan or help get more life out of that road. Whereas a lot of these roads that you're, you're saying are so problematic. The only solution is to tear them out entirely and redo the road, which is about four hundred thousand dollars or more per mile. Okay. Well, I will continue to look at it, Al. I, I thank you for the comment. Yeah, thank you. I don't think we have any other public comments. Uh, Sue, for the record, we did have one person join the Zoom session late. It's uh, Dan Klein via his iPad. Dan, okay. Okay. Oh, Lee, yes. We are got, got to do something about this trash hole. We have watched them put all the recycling in the trash. Don Heights and I stood there the other day and we also watched them put the trash in the same truck right in front of us. Okay. Anytime we're supposed to be getting a hauling fee back to the township for recyclers. We're supposed to be getting a tonnage reimbursement. You're absolutely right. So anytime you see that, please call in to Sue and let her know. That way we can put pressure on them from a contractual standpoint, because to your point, they're not supposed to do that. They're not picking up half the time. When they mm -hmm. pick up, it's all over the road. We have to go out and clean our own trash back up again. Yep. Mm -hmm. I call the company three, four times. Now they're calling me to see if we get it picked up because they take it off my bill. This is ridiculous. Yep. We have yep. a contract with this outfit, yep. fire them. So we have, to, we have to put pressure on them from the contract. I don't disagree with you, but if we straight out fire them, we won't have anybody collecting trash. We need to go through the process of getting bids for You've another got company. To do something about it. Yep. Yep. So and please, and pass it along. If also, you're, right, if your trash isn't being picked up or you see them doing that stuff, I am not to burden Sue anymore, but please call into Sue. And the more we, there is that part in the contract, we already discussed it with Andy at one point mm -hmm. too. So 
please pass along to your neighbors if they're not picking it up and if they're doing the mixing of the garbage and the recycling all into soup. The more complaints we have, the more pressure we could put on them. I call in soup all the time. I've, I've been out there taking video. I so, call yeah, every yeah, week call, down but, there. But ask your neighbors. Don't, don't, right. make an ass out. Yeah, don't, don't call them. Call like, I mean, you can still call, call them, but definitely let the yeah. township know because that's other than yeah. anecdotally hearing by proxy, like, oh, they skipped my trash or they dumped the bin or they threw my trash can out too. Unless we have actual like noted complaints, we don't really have a lot to go on to be able to put pressure back on them. And you can also call Richmond. I notified them about this because they have the same contract. Yeah. yeah. And they said they want them out. They're working right now. They're going to sue them. Okay. Well, I know we we are uh, we're at a point where we're probably going to be. So we'd be either yeah. renewing or looking for a different service. And we yeah. had already Rich, actually Rich talked about this. Is yeah. Yeah. Hot about. Yeah, yep. and that's we had actually already talked about that one one way or the other. We were planning on putting this out for proposal to see where the prices came back in, despite the fact I, that a I'm lot not cleaning up no more trash. I put out and I'm taking all my recycling over to the recycle plant. I'm done. And you tell me I can't get dumpster and can't get dumpster tomorrow. Okay. A lot of people would be happy to hear from that. Yeah. There's a lot of shifts coming. In there. Lee, for the record, I've talked to you several times about this. Like the, I personally don't have a problem with you having a dumpster. If it makes your life easier, I'm not opposed to it. But the whole thing with the ordinance being what it is, I even, I think we were, it was uh, election day when you were standing outside. Like, had you come to a meeting and asked, like actually asked on the record, we could go, we could figure something out. So if you want to get a dumpster, that's fine. Like, I don't know how legitimate it is, but if that's what you need to do to, to get the kind of results that you need, Go for it. Yeah. Okay, moving into the next items on the agenda. It's the approval of the minutes for July 24th, 2021 for the workshop meeting. Uh, all motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is to approve the minutes of the July 29th, 2021 Board of Supervisors meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to approve the minutes of the August 21st, 2021 workshop meeting. They're not completed. Okay. Thank you. Next is the treasurer's report. Um, this upcoming year, we are going to have a deficit when it comes to interim taxes. Uh, for this, for 2020, we received about $7,443.19. So it just brings everyone's attention. This is gonna have to be included in a budget item. Um, I can't remember who it was, uh, the, was it the recorder of deeds office or was it the treasurer's office that put out the, I can't remember which one, but um, it has, it's completely out of our control. So we're going to be receiving less money because of their process with interim taxes. So just something to keep on in mind when we uh, start discussing the budget. So there's a little bit less money coming into our township just for, it seems like the 2021, 2022, 22 uh, tax year. And again, it's out of our hands. There's nothing we could do about it. Okay. We'll just have to make sure that when we forecast yeah. next year that we keep that into account. Anything else? No. Okay. In that case, the next item on the agenda is to approve the payment of the bills for August 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next up is the zoning hearing board vacancy. Uh, we currently only have four members. It is a five member board. Uh, Attorney Keith Mooney has frequently recommended that we appoint a fifth member to prevent any issues with tie votes. Uh, Anthony Martin is interested and was kind enough to come out and talk to us in a sort of interview capacity on Saturday. Um, I think he'd be a good fit for the role. He certainly has the right temperament and the right background for it and certainly has the interest to do it. I'll make a motion to appoint Anthony Martin to the zoning hearing board. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is the Stonecroft infield. Uh, we discussed this at the workshop meeting. Uh, the basin had been made deeper previously from a uh, uh, plan 
and action from the stone group that BCCD had approved, not our engineer. Um, as it is currently, it is not draining. They will need to uh, resolve this prior to closing out any of the projects or, or finalizing the development. Um, Jim, I know I, I've not seen anything. Have you had anything cross your desk from Stone about uh, like any of the final paving or the, the infield? No. Okay. So at this point, we pretty much have to wait. We've we've thrown that out there. That's they can't they can't finalize until they do this. Um, one of the things that was asked at the workshop from some of the, the residents of Stone uh, Stonecroft was if we had any details or specifics about what proper curb repair actually entails and what the requirements are around like proper curb repair. Um, I said we could probably find something or get something from from you from a inspection capacity because there there's a lot of concerns circulating about what stone has been doing out there well certainly and, putting silicone on it it's not a proper repair. yeah and that's that's what we told them <laughs> it's like anything that they've done that isn't proper it's going to get noted during final it's inspection be, yeah it's going to have to be removed you know typically in the sections where it's cracked and small that section has to be cut out in a new section poured in hmm. there's some places where minor shipping that can be patched but it's not patched with silicone it yes. has to be done the correct way so uh, we previously identified those areas and told them they had to be removed. Okay. Yeah. So if there's any anything that we can offer them on, like the simple statement of like if you have a, a a crack of this nature, it has to be cut out, and obviously you can't patch it with silicon. If we can pass that over to them, I think that would go a long way for offering peace of mind. But we we flat out told them on Saturday's workshop meeting that when we do final inspection, or like specifically when when you do final inspection, anything that's subpar is not going to be it's not going to be passed. Be yeah. So if they're trying to slip it through now, it's they're going to pay for it later. Well, Sean already reached out to him when those pictures were sent and said, that this isn't going to be acceptable. We didn't approve this. You didn't tell us you were doing this and it all has to come out. Yep. So okay. um, he said to him, when you're ready to do it the right way, I'll go out and mark it for you. Everything has to be removed again. So that's, we haven't heard anything from him since. Okay. And we won't let him put the wearing course on those roads till the curbs are replaced. Yep. So. Very good. Okay, next up is the low volume road project of the year. The culvert replacement at school in Wintersville roads was done with the dirt and gravel low volume road grant. Uh, the BCCD board of directors approved this project as their low volume road project of the year. Uh, at the workshop meeting, we discussed sending a, a thank you letter to them because we were unfortunately not able to attend the, the award ceremony. We had scheduling conflicts. Um, if we haven't done that already, we can we can certainly do that. There's not a huge pressure for time, but it would be I think good to send them a send them a nice note because they've been very generous over the years. He's going to be dropping the award off tomorrow. Okay. So I'll make sure I thank him. Oh, I appreciate and, it. And a seven one. Yeah. Okay. Next up is the culvert on Marion Drive at Jacob Weiss. Uh, McCarthy Engineering provided a cost estimate of $91,539.37 to replace this culvert uh, using our road crew to do most of the work. Uh, at last month's Board of Supervisors meeting, we authorized McCarthy Engineering to pursue the permits for this project, which uh, I believe Jim handed me some of the, the paperwork I need to sign around the, several of the culverts this evening. Right, they're the four uh, applications for each of the different permits okay. for each location. So everything else is ready to go in next week. Uh, once we have the signatures. Excellent. Okay. You'll have the signatures before the end of the day. I figured. <laughs> uh, we also have a, another culvert on Marion Drive that's in dire need of replacement. This is by uh, Oscar Manbeck, just north of School Road. McCarthy Engineering provided a cost estimate of $59,423.79 to replace this culvert, again, utilizing our road crew predominantly to do most of the work. At last month's Board of Supervisors meeting, we again all authorized McCarthy Engineering to pursue the permits for this project. Uh, there's yet another culvert on Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover's farm. Uh, we were waiting for the approval of the Chapter 105 permit, so it's going to be connected to this. So hopefully, we'll have some good news soon on that. Any kind of on um, I have that somewhere. I, I don't think I have it like immediately in front of me. I, I want to say it was close to the other one. It was another like close to 90,000. I want to say it was 94 or 96,000. Jim, do you know that off the top of your head for Sheridan Road? One, one Sheridan? Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, that was we were saying was going to be between ninety and hundred. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say I want to say it was somewhere in like nine, the realm of ninety six. I have I have the paperwork here somewhere, but it was um, it was forty eight thousand just for the culvert and the head walls. Okay. Yeah, and then there was guide rail that I didn't put yeah. in there, which was a big number. Yeah. Yeah. If I could just like pause for a second here, just to give you an idea, Al. So just punching in those numbers, so that's three hundred forty one thousand nine hundred sixty three thousand dollars that we've spent that we we will be spending this year alone. To do these repairs, that also includes the paving that was done. It's. It, it, but I'm saying everything. It's, yeah, it's, it's getting process. Right, but because there's permits and everything is is in the process, the paving. Yeah, the it's. Paving was done. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the oil and so, chip was done. So, but but I'm just, I'm just letting you know, like this is the number for for now. It's close to three hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's eating up all the funds that we have in the account, basically. We we've, we've, we've applied, <laughs> we've applied, but there's yeah. there's not that many available. Well, we got a grant yeah. we did over Wintersville. That's the one they give the award for. Yep. This yeah. Month. Yeah. So we any any opportunities yeah. for grants we do go after, but it's not like we can get a hundred percent or I mean honestly right. even I think like we've gotten about eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Grants yeah. to do storm sewer projects over the last six years. So yeah. Fixing a well, they they have they can only be used for the pipes. Yeah, so the, the grants can only be used for the pipes yeah. and right around paving fifty feet around the pipes. Yeah, so I mean, there's still some out of pocket cost out, but we have gotten a lot of yeah. money yeah. from grants. Yeah. <laughs> publicly bid. All the all the jobs yeah. are publicly bid. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, I just I just wanted to give you yeah, I just wanted to give you an idea since they were all talking numbers. So that that's one of the things that goes along with the permits is there are certain requirements for you. Any sort of road work, you have to do at certain times of the year. You have to make sure that it's not a bog turtle habitat. There's, there's not like an environmental disturbance. If it's a stream that has to be redirected and pumped around, there's all sorts of stuff. It's not as simple, even from a technical standpoint, as you might think. And then on top of that, things like the, the pipes or the large concrete precastings, they're not cheap. It's not like we can go down to an Aldi and, and pick these up or go to a Lowe's or something like that. It's, it's things that have to be generally either specially made for that sort of thing or so let me just explain it depending on the most of these projects you're referencing are over the, the minimum where we can't just go and buy the stuff we can't just go and get our quote okay. we have to under the and what I, what I was going to say is because we have to get those bids, the request for bid itself can take some time, and that's that's just because you have to get it very specialized to make sure it's done properly, mm -hmm. and then all of that takes quite a bit of time. But the projects that you guys have, they're going to be done in the next few months. Yeah, and so yeah. once we have the permits and stuff, it's going to yeah. it's going to go together yeah, quickly. But it's okay. When a certified person pick up more heads or the water of the thing I get up. So Jim, offhand, you don't you don't have to give me like a textbook answer here, but with uh, that stretch of road by Alice House, which I think is that Marion? Right there? Yeah. Yeah, it's around um, the corner of Marion and like and where the through the back alley. Yeah, yeah, the yeah where the car dealer is. Houses. Yeah. If if I sent let's say a hypothetical, I send the road crew out. You can make okay. No, no, hold, no, hold on. No, I, I appreciate it, Al. But, but uh, much like everything else, if we if we're gonna do it, I'd, I'd like to do it right. Are there any weird concerns with like the DEP with stormwater runoff if we go and alter? No, so, there wouldn't be any with that. You just have to watch. You don't build a wall within ten feet of the edge of the road because then it's a drop off. You need guide rail, all the yeah. all the protection stuff. So, okay, so that'll be Al, nothing to worry about. So, if, yeah, so let's, Butch, if, 
you, if you have an opportunity maybe this weekend or sometime like next week, let's go out and look at that and kind of get an assessment of if there's anything we can regrade and take some measurements. Okay. That's, that's fine. That personal business is your own, but we'll, we'll look at it, Al. If there's not a, any sort of concern about stormwater management or anything like that, then if it's a simple matter of sending the road through. Well, I, I appreciate it, but with, well, I, I, I appreciate it, Al, but with it, with it being potentially within our right of way, it really should be the township doing it for a number of reasons. One of them is liability, and the other one is for you as a homeowner, you as a, a property owner, you as a constituent, shouldn't be maintaining the roads. Just to throw it out there. So we will look at it, and we'll we'll assess what we can do. And as long as we're, as Jim said, as we're not within ten feet of the road surface, then we can we can look at putting something in place there. That's understandable. And anytime we've had, and granted, this was on a bigger scale. Like I said, we'll we'll go out and look at it out. We'll go out and look at it in the next couple of days, even. But we've had similar problems, granted, on a larger scale that we've done. Like Hickory Road is a is a good example that 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 guy was every time it rained he'd get water in his barn. We. I I appreciate it, Al. I I appreciate it, Al. We'll look at it. Next, also on the, the subject of roads, is uh, Spur Road and School Road, the, the intersection there. Last month's meeting, we authorized the cost of $1,000 for the Tulpahawken Township Road Crew to lay five feet of macadam at the intersection of Spur Road. Uh, Tulpahawken's Roadmaster was notified, and it will be it's done sometime in this, uh, September. The reason that we're doing this, just for everybody's understanding, is that's a, uh, uh, it's a DSA road for, for Spur. Um, right. It's compacted, but it's not actually like laid down macadam. So the first five feet will help to avoid ruts and divots and, and the road surface degrading from people turning onto that road. Next is the uh, flooding situation at 979 William Penn Boulevard. Um, Jim McCarthy and myself were out to look at the properties. Um, we will be looking at that pipe and doing a clean out on that pipe once we know that it, it's in good shape. Um, the downstream end wall is going to need to be reset and leveled. Uh, the township right away only extends one foot past the end wall. So we're in the process of getting permission from the property owner to be able to go onto the property and do some of the work, as well as extend a little bit of a, a riprap barrier past the end wall so that the homeowner can regrade their lawn a little bit the way that it's supposed to be by original design so that water goes around their home and not through it. Um, the property on the other side, 976 William Penn Boulevard, a stormwater basin was constructed and is helping to reduce the water flow that is going through that pipe, which uh, really was one of the biggest problems, it was, as we had discussed previously, really kind of a, a three-chambered problem. You had 976 diverting pretty much every bit of water off of that property into that pipe, the pipe being slightly clogged on the actual pipe itself and the end being obstructed, and then their yard being graded in a way that was basically funneling water right towards the front door. So now that we've gotten one out of the three, the next one we're going to do, and then when the property do owner does the other one, it should pretty much all but mitigate the issue that they've been experiencing. Have, have we heard anything Is from this them? Scheduled? The, we haven't scheduled it yet because we still need permission. I've asked Butch to go out and poke at the pipe within our right of way, but once we have written permission from the property owner, and, and Andy has actually been working on getting something together around that temporary construction easement, when we have that, that's when we can really start the fund. Have, have you heard from them? I have not heard have from you, them. Have you heard any, anything further? Uh, yeah. yeah, we're putting together a little sketch for Andy rather than uh, normally we do a survey and all that. But it's it's so small. I suggested to save the cost. We yeah. probably oh, yeah. sketch on who worked in the box. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so, it's so minimal. So yeah. We're going to get that over to Andy this week and then we're going to include it. And 
we, we had a very nice conversation, probably half an hour worth with the property owner and explained it and really I kind know. of walked him through it. And he seemed I to think, understand the, the situation. Things, things move too slow. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, if we can get the fire department out there, have the blow oh, yeah. pipe out, let Butch take a look at the, uh, the yeah. wall. And... Yeah, right. I We're... wouldn't think this would take three months, but it's, it's three right. months. Yeah, but it's amazing how fast right the time away. goes. And then if something happens on their property and we've caused damage. And, and we really should have the other yeah. end of the pipe. Because I don't know if you've driven, you probably can't see it from the road, but the pipe, the way their, their lawn is, is there's only a small bit of the pipe that's still above grade at this point. We can't really blow it out with a fire hose or any other kind of water jet until we've excavated that out so that it's not just, okay. just shredding the lawn when we do it. But it's, it's in motion, it's in the works. And uh, I know it's probably not as fast as some some would like, but it, it is going as fast as it can go. Okay. Next is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, this project is predominantly located in Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County. Uh, we expressed concerns around this project and the scope of it resulting in traffic within Marion Township being drastically increased. Wollstorf Borough shares this, uh, this concern and uh, is willing to actually share the cost of a traffic study with us. They have appointed TPD to do the traffic impact study. Uh, Jim Brooks will be our, our point person, our representative as this starts to progress, um, as we, we go through the review and uh, the, the analysis of the 1.4 acre uh, Marion Township project, which is just a small sliver of the huge industrial complex and warehouse that they're, they're looking to put in basically right in Stonecroft's backyard. I, I haven't seen I anything additional yet, but this is one of those things where the, it's it's been kicked off, and we're just I think in a, in a waiting period until more stuff yeah, kind of no, develops. The study is in the process for my understanding. Yeah, and, and um, the engineer had contacted me about you know, not needing approval in the township, and I said, "Well, you need to submit a land development plan to us so we can see what you're doing." And I said, "With the traffic concerns, odds are we probably would not defer it until we knew that our traffic concerns were satisfied." So that'd be another vehicle of we can reimburse, get our traffic mm -hmm. fees reimbursed by them having a land development plan Good. filed in the township instead of us, even though we're splitting yeah. it from Olmsdorf, it's in theory. Still, if we can build back. We can have them pay for it so we don't have to split it with Olmsdorf. Yeah. yeah, and from my understanding, Mill Creek really pushed them to get this traffic study done to really make sure that they the impact, because it's not just in Mill Creek, mm. it is a lot in both uh, municipalities, they really want to make sure that if they approve this, it's not negatively, they're limiting at least the impact. Okay, so, that's good. Good, I'm glad Mill Creek is is kind of going under the under the same lens as we are, that we don't want to create an adverse impact. Right. Um, also, Courtney, could you do me a favor? Could you slide the microphone, the one that's uh, immediately to your left, a little closer, thank you. Is that you. better? Yeah, that's, that's that much better. better. Thank I'm, you. I'm sorry. When this study's complete, is that going to give us a little more uh, chance to put a stop sign in on main road? It might. Um, one of the things with stop signs is you have a traffic study and there's a number of warrants that you have to meet. Um, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm, uh, you have to meet like three out of the five or three. There's 11, you have to meet seven. Seven, thank you. Um, and and the, the big problem is um, accidents, like serious non drive away accidents. You need a certain amount of them. That's usually what the warrant you don't meet that you have to meet. It's it's one of those things that seems easy. I'd love personally to put a stop sign in at like church. That's like, to me, that seems like a perfect spot for that, but it's it's very difficult to put a stop sign in anymore. Yeah, you can always put a stop sign on the lesser road at a, at a cross intersection. Mm -hmm. The minor road can have two stops, but to get a stop on the major road is yeah. when you have to meet the warrant. Yeah, which is what we're, we're at right. right now. Same thing with like the, the the top of the intersection of Water Street, we have a stop sign there, but nothing on, on Main. You can put dangerous intersections. Dangerous and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we don't need a warrant for that. Yeah, I, yeah. So we actually we, we just put in a couple of dangerous yeah. intersection yeah. signs. Yeah, if that um, if that's one, I, yeah, I think you guys want to need it. Yeah, yeah. I think I one know. of the there's a there's a couple of contributing factors to the, the desire for the stop sign. People tend to blow down Main Street because it's a long, wide, yeah, pretty much unobstructed section of road. So people speed. Yes. Um, there's also 
depending on the time of the year, pretty high truck traffic and things like that. Mm -hmm. So like common sense would dictate if you have people going too fast or you want to maybe try to encourage people to go back onto the highway rather than doing the, the cut through stop signs a no brainer, but it, it's, it's, it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. 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 Very difficult. Yeah. yeah. Where you think, where you think you need one and it should be, it usually doesn't meet PennDOT's criteria to put it. Yeah. It's, with that said, I still want to go through the motions of, I think that um, because of just the line of sight, we might be able to get just enough maybe, but to go through and do the study for like at the top of uh, Water Street here, because the visibility as you turn out is is awful. I know I've personally been almost hit a couple of times, and I know that's a common yeah. complaint from a lot of people that we haven't had accident accidents, but we've had a pretty fair number of near misses. Right. And we can't get it back. Yeah, no, no. God, no, no. Like, <laughs> oh, oh my God! Oh. Like we can maybe yeah, put up a caution like sign. But... Oh. Yeah, that's that's another one that's oh. yeah. that's a monumental <laughs> undertaking. But yeah, so it's it's one of the things that I want to continue looking at and trying to assess. But I know it's for everybody in the audience. It is a very difficult thing to to put in a stop sign. Some signage like no parking here to corner. It's already supported by statute and law. Right. Um, Crosswalks. Like 18 years to get 419 and 422. 37 years. Yeah, 37 years for that one. Yeah. So. What was that? But where 419 and 422, it took 37 years to get that. To get a left there. turn arrow put back wow. on the oh. same. Put back. Yeah. That's. That was basically Connie Carl Cower wore down PennDOT. They got tired of hearing her call. And they finally just said, go do she, it. She did tell me, though, that I was, that she thinks I was a good luck charm because I was <laughs> trying to come along. So maybe I'm good luck. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll give you a call if we go to put a traffic light in. Hopefully that'll rub off. Um, Can we put up a sign that says, do you slow down? I mean, I would have to, we'd says, have to check the rules. Did you miss the last slide? We could, maybe the next block. Hey, <laughs> we, we can put all those. We could put in like, yeah. we could maybe yeah, put in. Jim, all those signs you can put up. Yeah, we yeah. could put in like caution or pedestrian <laughs> crossing signs. That's you fine. Could, but you could do what the people around the corner from me do, which says, uh, and there you are. They have slow down, pretend your kids live here. Yeah. Right. Like mm -hmm. all those. So, I mean, we have some other options other than stop signs, but if it's not something that people have to listen to, chances are they're probably just going to ignore it. I guess I'll keep talking. See what she did. She just wore them down over. She, she, yeah, she called her guy and just made She just called him like she got three, four times a person. week for 10 years. Yes. Once she got well, now you know. <laughs> now you know. Once I gave her Brian Boyer's phone number, she was relentless on the poor guy. He finally, <laughs> finally caved in. That is never that. I mean, we could, we could do that, but I don't know if we get the traffic light would really get us traffic too much because you figure like you're, you're looking to break up traffic, not control traffic two directions. But can we put up one that says stop sign ahead and the next block says just kidding? Yeah, probably <laughs> stop sign ahead eventually. No, I, I mean, seriously, we need to, we need to put something up. It's a cautionary stuff. sign. I mean, I'm, I'm being trying to be funny, but yeah, surely we can put up some signs that encourage people to slow down. Yeah, and, and this yeah. is when, when A1, I got I have to call and set the date with A1. One of the things that was on the, Any the, the road painting plan that we, we had talked about was, was, was painting the lane, the outside yeah. lane lines, visually making things narrower helps, like putting like painted crosswalks in, because we can do that at anywhere that we want. Um, having the visual breakup on the road kind of... It, for people that aren't intentionally being malicious, you tend to be yeah. less speed prone when you're visually yeah. more narrow. So we yeah, could put up, we could put in crosswalks and put slow yeah, crosswalks. Yeah, I mean, yeah. other than the crosswalk signs, when right. A1 does the line painting, they're putting in three crosswalks on Main Street. Well, we should probably look into that. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah that, that's that's I, a I simple word. Yeah. It's yeah. I've been I've driven yeah. through here at night going to thirty miles an hour. People are flying. Mm -hmm. I know they're doing at least fifty or sixty. Yeah, and and, yeah. and to the point that Roy raised at the last meeting, we can certainly get the the sign charge back up and put that out there too. Um, yeah. that helps. That helps sometimes. But like I said, there for just as many people that it causes to slow down. Just from what yeah. we saw in the data, it, it causes that many people more to speed up to see how high they get sign to go. Um, so yeah, there's there's a number of things that we can work on. Simple things. The stop sign seems like it would be the best thing, but it's unfortunately also one of yeah. the hardest. Yeah. Yeah. You can do the yeah. You can do the milled strips. You know, when you hit them, it feels like you're caught. The, oh, the, yeah. the rumble strips. No, which, which we were talking about that. that no, no, you don't yeah. want. Well, you don't want speed bumps. These are raised. These are, 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 are where they mill. You don't have to do that. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Un- unintentional rumble strips. Yeah, like where 422 on, on the eastern side of town, yeah. when it goes up a highway to not a highway anymore, those yeah. strips. Slows I mean, that's actually not a bad idea down by the triangle when people come off the highway having having yeah. a section of cuts like that yeah, so that it rumbles you. you. Okay. Yeah, there's no warrants to put those milled rumble strips in. Okay. Well, it's, you don't want to put the bumps because then Butch goes through his windshield when he hits him plowing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't want to mess up that pretty face over there. Okay, yeah. that's actually, I'll make a note of that because the rumble strips might also help because that's, I think, one of the biggest, people don't tend to speed going this way as much as they tend to speed going yeah. going from west to east, coming off of 422 off of that dog leg and they just continue going like highway speed. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Thank you for the brainstorm. That's yeah. a great Thank idea. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I Absolutely. can send you a link to the highway traffic calming manual. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. I, I tried to send it to another supervisor and it wouldn't go through because it's gigantic. But I and then I said, well, I'll just send it the link. So I'll I'll forward everyone the link tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Or and I mean conversely, if you want to put it out on the Google Drive. What's that? If you want to put it on the Google Drive, you can just upload it to the Google Drive. It's just a other uh, thing. Yeah, I mean if you have the whole thing, there's not a size restriction. It's linked, it's linked on the website. Yeah, it's just a link I, right to the federal highways. Okay. Either way is either way is fine. Like as long as we get it, but uh, you have you have options is the point. It's a pretty big document. It's like three or four hundred pages. Yeah, with all kinds of color pictures. So, and- so light reading. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, next up on the agenda is building maintenance. Um, I, I'll turn it over um, to Irene. I guess. Yeah, we're still waiting to get a lot of quotes. Um, we haven't heard from contractors, so Tuesday I'm going to be on the phone again to see what we do to get this building up to par, and then come back and have a very long discussion over what our next steps would be before we spend any kind of money. So, um, because the numbers are looking a lot bigger than what we initially thought, because the more we look at things, the more problems we're uncovering. So, um, yeah, so that's on hold for now, other than collecting more data and, and um, quotes from people. Yeah, I think the the, the kind of the end state desire that we're do, we want to go towards is piecing out and pricing out all the things that we need to do to the building, not cosmetic, but functional improvements, replacing yep. windows, repointing bricks, doing the last bits of the roof, uh, anything we want to do with the second floor in terms of HVAC or accessibility or that section of floor that's been ripped up and never put back down. Um, and then comparing that against what's the what's the cost of any alternative that, that we have to, to repairing the current building. So we'll hopefully try to get some of that coalesce, but that's a, that's a pretty big, Big collection of data. We need more more quotes from people and things like yeah. that. And then I'm afraid to pull an elevator comes I think I will. Yeah, and so you yeah, should. You yeah. should honestly. You should. Yeah, I will. Um, so we'll have more on that, which is a good segue into the next topic, which is the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, a motion was made at the workshop meeting to transfer the ARPA money, which was a one hundred and uh, one hundred thousand eight hundred and forty eight dollar and seventy nine cent uh, payment that we received. Uh, out to the money market account where it will actually generate a little bit of interest rather than basically nothing in the checking. Um, By the the nature of the ARPA money, we don't really have to account for any interest earned on that. It's interest earned. Uh, PSATS expects the U.S. Treasury Department to issue final rules during the fall of 2021, and uh, we will need a resolution at some point to amend the 2021 budget to include this line item in payment. Accordingly, I believe... um... I want to make sure we didn't have to do an EAC of the resolution about the PSATs. Do you know about anything uh, more about that? If not, we can find that again and forward it and sort it to both of us. Don't okay. have it, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that, because PSATs provided that resolution. Yeah, I might be at, at like a few more meetings in the next few months. Oh, Max is here. Thank His you. daughter starting at um, her soccer, uh, oh. soccer team in college. Oh, so. gotcha. Gotcha. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll send it you your way. Oh, no, not at all. It's always nice to have you here. Yeah, we just, I, uh, I think, I think it's, it's prudent to wait to see when the Treasury Department comes out with their final uh, rules. We had, yeah, we yeah. had a couple of things in mind that were within the scope of what was already put out, but it was getting really tedious kind of reviewing and reviewing and reviewing. And every, every two days they've come up with something different. There's the larger categories, but now that we're kind of reconsidering over what we want to do, Building maintenance wise, we want to make sure we're, we're on par. With if you're going to get the final rules in the yeah. next few months, I will wait till we'll do yeah. that. And then whatever you guys yeah. want to do, 
if you're not sure what it's yeah. saying, then you can tell with our office yeah. and we can make sure that we're fitting with this. Yeah. 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 We're and, no and we have like four or six years in which to use yeah. the funds. Yeah. It's not like we're, yeah. we're pressed for time to use this before like the end of 2022 or something like that. So, and you, and you, depending on what you're using it for, you might be better off waiting a year or so. Mm -hmm. yeah, construction okay, costs are through the roof. The construction oh, yeah. costs will go back down. Yeah. Uh, yep, very, really. very true. Stabilized, at least. Uh, Stabilized, yeah. Yeah. Next is the Tulpahawken police service rates. Uh, we have received a letter indicating a 4% increase, which is pretty standard for that agreement. Uh, the math on the letter though was incorrect. The secretary sent us a corrected letter. Effective January 1st, 2022, the rate will be $54,246.96 or $4,520.58 monthly. The rate for 2021, is uh, $52,160.52 or $4,346.71 monthly. So slight increase, which is pretty standard year over year, roughly three or 4%. Okay. Next item is the semi-consentennial for the Commonwealth of PA in the USA. This is for July 4th, 2026. Uh, we received an email from Paul Jansen at the CELG. They would like all municipalities in Berks County to pass a resolution supporting the PA Commission for the USA Semi-Consentennial. According to Paul's second email, we may or may not decide to directly participate, but are not required to participate. Um, the email- county, The county commissioners also requested. They adopted a resolution to ask all municipalities. Okay. And when we had asked for some more information, they weren't super forthcoming with it, but it wasn't, it's not that Right now, they're not holding out. It's just they don't have detail. Yeah, right now it's just a letter you support the county doing that mm -hmm. at some sort of celebration. Um, you're not required to do anything at this point. They're just asking you that uh, municipalities express support for whatever Berks County will do. And then you, if you guys want to do anything or how you're going to participate, we'll make sure once they make plans. We got some time. Yeah, so we've got plenty of time. And from the, the letter that the second letter that he had sent was basically, we don't know what we want to do. We just want to know interest. I, I, I suspect that formal plans for uh, this 250 yeah. will be coming out more like 2023 or 2024. Yeah. Uh, I'll have a better idea of what they'd like to do. Once the pandemic is definitely cooled down. Yeah. I, I mean, that's I when they're going to get more final plans. I don't have a problem with a like 250 year celebration personally. No, but like it says much of nothing. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I had a problem with, like agreeing to saying something but nothing. Yeah. You're just yeah. agreeing, you're just saying you support the celebrating the 250. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. not actually <laughs> signing up for anything. Yeah. We're just saying yeah. we think it's yeah, a good that's idea. It. That's all it's asking you to do. That's just all. I know it's all. Okay. <laughs> I've been thinking that for a few months, but that's what they're asking for. Okay. I have no objection to it from a legal standpoint. Okay. So when we want a permit for something, it takes months or years, but they're planning five years down the road and want us to approve it now. No, they're not. You're not approving the plan. Well, so, we're, yeah. we're saying saying we giving them that support. That we, we should celebrate. Five years You're saying we want to celebrate 250 years of <laughs> okay. existing as the United so States. I don't know. There, there wasn't any really deadline on that. They basically just no, I don't believe gave like a, deadline. please do this as soon as you can. So if, even if we don't do anything with it today, it's not like it's... Going to evaporate or we're going to miss a target well, on don't things do anything with it today it's going to stay on the agenda oh, i know yeah. i know i know just, i know it's going to stay on until we do something but i'm just saying know. from from what they're looking for it's not like we have to turn something back in before august 31st or no. anything like that we don't have any over overarching deadlines so if we if we want to do something with it tonight we can if we want to wait a month we can so but if you think you want to join it, then I, mean, I don't just do it and get it over. Yeah, with. I, I, pers it on the I personally don't have a problem with it. So my next question is going to be Jim and Irene. Where where do you stand I, on I, this? I, I, have a problem with it. I, I guess I just want to look at the wording again okay. and uh, before I commit. So I'll be here Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll table that one until next yeah. month. Uh, next is the property maintenance issues of I, IPMC. Uh, we had discussed uh, at last meeting having a rental inspection ordinance, which would allow access to rental properties every other year. Uh, we were supplied a copy of Richland Borough's ordinance. I have not completed doing like a red line on that, but I know Irene and Jim, you have read that in greater detail. And I know uh, Courtney here would be able to comment on any of the other questions that, that we have. Yeah, that one was updated in the past year, I believe, and that needed a big overhaul so our office actually did that one in the past year so that's the most up-to-date 
one we have prepared. Uh, and then rather than, uh, rather than, you know, having our own code, mm -hmm. you reference the international property maintenance mm -hmm. code, and then you can always up when that comes out with a new one, you can always amend the ordinance to adopt the new one, but that makes that's let the professionals decide on what the maintenance should be. Great. I'd like to I'd like to review it again, and then by, hopefully by next meeting we could decide whether or not we'd like to ad adopt a similar ordinance. I think uh, I, I'm definitely in favor of it. It should only if you guys yeah. like, want to do something pretty much identical. It should only take about a month to prepare, and then okay. the advertising. Excellent. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County EMS Dispatch Services. Uh, we are paying for fire police EMS dispatch fees to the county annually, which are subject to an annual increase, uh, not subject to any limitations. They have decided, uh, and it's actually solely decided at the discretion of Berks County Commissioners, uh, they have decided to fix the annual fee uh, subject to uh, increases based on the inflation index. Uh, they have requested that we adopt a resolution to execute the new agreement to provide dispatch services before the end of the year, 12-31-21. The anticipated cost for 2022 is $20,231.07. Um, we don't really have a lot of choice on this because yep. we want fire and dispatch and EMS <laughs> services. So what do we pay now? Um, I'd have to look and see. It's 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 less than that. It's yeah, I want to say it's like twelve thousand. Uh, I thought it was like 18. I'd have to look at the budget, but I think it's like 18. I think you're, you're talking the part. Yeah, yeah. He's thinking the part fire. It's, it's about 18. Yeah, it's, I want to yeah. say it's 18 and some change. I'd have yeah. to look at the, the exact approved budget amount, but yeah. like you're, you're thinking of the yeah. foreign fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's always almost the same. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, they're very, very similar amounts and very similar things. But yeah, the, the dispatch one, it's, it's again, it's historically, it's been about three, between three and 5% annually, even though they, they had that, you can, we can increase it as much as we want. They haven't really, haven't really used or abused that. Okay. Next is to update the Saldo uh, subdivision and land development ordinance fees, uh, along with the stormwater management ordinance fees. Uh, the subdivision and land development ordinance is from 1991, and the fees are from 2005. Stormwater management ordinance and fees are both from 2002, so they're at this point fairly dated and are, are probably uh, wildly outpaced on the, the adjustment of, of cost over the years. Uh, so this is something that we're going to need to, to look at and have like McCarthy Engineering look at and uh, Kozlov Stout look at in terms of what those fees actually are. Yes. So we're charging an appropriate amount to people that use those services instead of having the, the taxpayer essentially take the, so the do, shortage. Do you mind, I'll send you an email then and, and uh, what information we have would be able to help me come up with a new fee schedule. Sure, I can just get you a couple from the surrounding that municipalities sure. to start. Yeah. That would be fantastic. A bunch have been yeah. updated over the past yeah. year. Yeah. Because what we would soon um, realize is we're eating those fees. So mm -hmm. what's happening is our our, like fees, our, are our fees are not covering our right. costs. Yeah. Right. Right. They're, not, they're not current. So yes, I, I really appreciate it then. Thank you. Okay. We could update our fees. And that's something we could post on the website. Oh, yeah. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. The last item on, on, uh, on the agenda is the Act 537. Um, we are working on getting an income study done and a letter out to property owners regarding the on lot management ordinance and the, the pump out inspection schedule therein. Uh, the income study is part of what is required for the process of the actual Act 537 plan that was previously submitted and approved by the DEP, uh, but it also gives us a good idea on financial feasibility and affordability should we have to challenge this in any capacity around uh, undue hardship or burden on under the constituency. Um, Alan Madera, who was our new SEO, was at the workshop meeting and suggested a few changes uh, around the letter and just implementation of the plan that were very, very good. Um, he'd like to launch the program starting in January and suggested raising the inspection fee slightly to make sure that we were able to cover the, the cost and expenses around the uh, inspection appropriately very similar to what we were just talking about with the saldo. Um, the, the switch from our old SEO to the new SEO, it's a slightly higher fee schedule, but the, uh, not to undercut anybody's quality of work, but things like the invoicing have been monstrously better. Uh, and it's, it takes a lot less time for the treasurer to reconcile the bills now that we're on Allen rather than, than Gary. Um, 
So we'll be working closely with Alan around the, the tax list for the, the mailing addresses for the letters and developing the, the list of properties if per, I, I wanna say quadrant, but we're not doing fours of the, the, the areas, the zones of the township uh, in terms of who gets what, what notice and what requirement for pumping out at what schedule. Have we contacted our legislature, legislatures, TERS, about the money that's coming into the state and whether we're eligible for that? Not yet. That was actually going but, to be the next. Uh, we, we, there is uh, something within the state as far as. Well, that's in your packet. Yeah. So there was some kind of bill passed. It's billions, billions of dollars. We just need a small yeah, five billion dollars for water and wastewater infrastructure. Maybe we can get some of that. Yeah, for, for anybody that didn't didn't catch that on how much the mic got that, it was uh fifty five billion yeah. is being allocated in Pennsylvania for water and wastewater projects. Which uh, might I don't want to say might, it would definitely be worthwhile to reach out to like uh Joswiak, Argo. Um, yeah, yeah. That we should we should write a letter and if there's if there's money to be had. Let's let's bring that into the equation, or at least make the ask for that into the equation. Um, Never heard them, ask them to lobby yeah. on our behalf for a piece of that cash. Yeah. 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 What, what you guys were referring to, what she was referring to, is a federal act and has not been passed by the Senate yet. Okay. But if that happens, the states will most likely be responsible for administering it. And at that point, we'll have more information. But at this point, oh, yeah. it, it might it's not a hurt. Little, but it's also, it's going to be quite limited in what it's, the scope is. My understanding is really it's yeah. yeah. well, well, probably going to be, and one of the, in the 537 plan, one of the options is rural utility services, which is the 40 year low. One mm -hmm. one percent interest note. The problem is it looks good, but in, by the time that comes around, you're already replacing stuff, and you're still paying debt service. So. Yeah. Uh, well, it, with that said, even if we're not sure what the requirements are, it probably wouldn't hurt to send a letter out to people, letting them know that we're we're interested in, in anything they can help us with. Well, Colleen's pretty much up. I know you should know. You guys. She's up on all those mm -hmm. new grants as they come out on a daily basis because that's all she does. Yeah. Is, is write grants. So okay. she hasn't mentioned that one to me, but next time I'll go to I'll ask her. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. So between things like that, as we start to gather more information, we do the income study, we have information from the pump outs that'll paint a, a very clear, well-defined data-driven picture of where, where need exists, where affordability sits in terms of how much the project is going to cost versus any alternatives. And that'll, I, I think, really be enlightening on there's a new program that comes out where there is funds available. They pretty much have a webinar yeah. as soon as they're capable of doing it. Like okay. And they ask our office almost every time. So okay. you do have the education resources available. Um, and there is no restriction for CELG that it has to be a municipal elected official to attend. So if other individuals would like to attend those webinars, they're welcome to. Okay, fantastic. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. Yeah, that's that's one that. look at what they're providing because I've they stay more up to date, especially with new regulations and everything like that, than uh, anywhere else. And we're lucky here in Berks County to have a conversation like that because there really isn't anywhere else in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Yeah. And for anything that we're referring to is online, if, if anyone here doesn't have a computer or the internet at home, you can always go down the roads of the library. Everyone is wonderful about helping you log on and get some searches that you want to get to. So you don't have to worry about if you don't have a computer at home, you can always look up stuff online at the library. Yeah. Okay. That's the last item on the agenda, unless you guys have something that you want to add. Okay. Let me uh, pull up. What, I just was going to just say a reminder that Act 65 and it goes into effect, I believe, next week. Wait, can you say that again loud? The, the Act 65, 65. Amendment goes into effect, I believe, next week. It's the uh, posting the minutes. Uh, uh, and from my understanding, you guys were already complying very well with that. Uh, oh, the sunshine. Uh, the minutes. Yeah. The, minute, yeah. the agenda has been posted on the website. Yeah. You already have them available here. Um, and from my review of it, it looks like if you guys do have attachments, you could um, have them available here, but also just have them as a link available uh, for people to click on online. Yeah. I know you guys already used Google Drive. Uh, 
Yeah, yes. so it's it, we've been continuing to put them up on Google Drive, and I've also been get, trying to get them up on the website. I have t tonight's up on the website. I was remarking you to You have Sue. to have the agenda on the website, yeah. and then I would recommend including in that a link to the Google Drive for whatever you whatever attachments would be relevant for okay. the agenda uh, for pu the public to be able to see. Yeah. But um, you guys already do a great job of having very clear agendas that make it very clear what you're gonna you possibly are voting on. Mm -hmm. So. You guys are in a better position, I'll say, than many others when it comes to what you're already including in your agendas and how good you are getting them well, thank, together. Thank you. So props to you guys for being prepared for this and, way before the amendment happened. Yeah. Just for everybody else on the board, like Irene, uh, Jim, I mentioned to Sue, uh, I ran into a problem and I re need to reach out to tech support. Um, I was able to get one of the agendas up, but there seems to be something weird with my account where when I try to upload certain things to other sections, it doesn't recognize that I'm an administrator. So once I get that sorted out, I'll be able to start uploading things in larger quantities rather than just like piecemeal, because when I went to do it, it just, it just didn't work. Um, and, and they need to resend my yeah, and I, stuff because I never got it. If I have an opportunity where I'm through the building, I can actually, I can do that with you. I just okay. need to be with you. I can't do it like independent of you okay. um we can we can reset that in the same thing with jim and irene okay. we can we can go through that um but uh, i've been trying to get that stuff up i've been keeping like videos up on on youtube as, as quickly as i can um and trying to get things like i got to go through and do the, the meeting dates on the calendar but i got the trash and recycling and i got that for some reason it went on mondays originally yeah. i fixed it it's on tuesdays okay. Okay. um just little stuff like that. And then once we start to have more of the, the other content, the older content digitized around some of the ordinances, it should be a simple process of just mm -hmm. uploading that mm -hmm. once we get that whole like, administrator role thing sorted out. Yeah. So, Thank you for your expertise. Well, yes, yes. I'm happy to do it. I wish I had more time to throw at it, but every little bit that I can, I'm trying to make it count. You. Yeah, the only thing you have to do as of next week is get the agendas on 24 hours beforehand. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's fine. That's the only thing, so. Yeah, so like I'll, I'll make sure that we have working backwards. I'll start getting them uploaded, but I'll, I'll make sure that you can get signed in so that when you're done with it, it's pretty straightforward. It's very similar. It's not quite as user friendly as the Google Drive, but it's pretty simple in the sense that you go in and you create a meeting agenda, you title it, you put a date and a time to it, you make you put a file okay, attachment. Just on write it. that down. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll show you how to do it. I'll write I'll write a guide around it so that everybody knows how to do it. Um, but it's it's pretty straightforward. We should have no problem complying with that. Um, one of the other big things while we're talking Act 65. Um, is if there is something that comes up on the agenda that we do not have as an agenda item, but it comes up in discussion and it is something we would have to vote on that would require funding. Like let's say Butch or somebody from the road crew says like something broke on the truck. It's not on the agenda. Well, I'm just saying, just saying, um, I'll knock on fake wood. But um, if there's something that would result in us voting on spending money, there's a very specific way that you have to, to handle that now with Act 65. You would have to motion to uh, amend the agenda to include that and then you would then have to update the agenda on any of your public facing things like the website the like yeah you have to you have to do that rather than doing that like we, we would sometimes do in the comments of like hey i i found this that's wrong i need to go get a, a bunch of quotes and yeah actually there's a, a little more of a prescribed process because of the the act update so yep, that's perfectly fine happy to do it um so uh, from a police report standpoint kind of tangented off there for a little bit. Um, relatively quiet month, uh, standard number of hours patrolled, it was about 38.5. Uh, there were seven incidents, eight complaints, uh, three miscellaneous calls for service, uh, 10 fire advisories, four traffic stops, uh, four citations issued. So there was a citation for each stop uh, and 58 total security checks. Uh, I do know that uh, we had officers speed trapping several times along Main Street. Uh, I spoke to the officers each time they were out, and unfortunately, they, they didn't catch anybody speeding in the times that they were here. They can't be here all the time, but they are making a more pronounced effort uh, now as a direct response, uh, not that they weren't doing that before, but as a direct response to the complaint at the last meeting around speeding that they've been setting up specifically along Main Street for that reason. Um, so they'll, they'll continue to monitor that, but there, there's things that we can pursue, like we talked about with signage or, or line paintings that will help. Or, I think it's best to do that because it's you're either going to get somebody when you're trapping or you're not. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you want to, about that or do you? No, 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 okay. No, no, no. So I, I don't have any more yeah. comments. So go ahead. Um, um, we're just talking about budget. Um, briefly, um, student mentioned to me uh, last meeting that they were going to have a problem having the budget discussion. Yeah. So, uh, 
So, so I was gonna and, I was gonna put it on the agenda next month yeah. so you can start talking about it. But so, then either you need to do it at workshop or I need to advertise yeah. a meeting. Yeah. So in the past, if memory serves me, we did some of the preliminary stuff. Like we looked at some comparisons of like basic basic discussion of like, do we want to keep taxes the same? Do we want to raise? Do we want to lower? Um, things like the street lights, do we still have enough of a surplus that we want to leave it slightly undercut, or do we want to adjust it up to a normalization? Um, where we, we would handle that at the workshop and then the actual meat and potatoes would be at the Thursday night meeting so that there was more of a public presence here to discuss and go through some of the, the major line items like we're budgeting this. I don't need a, I don't think we need a special meeting for that. It'll just be, yeah. it'll be a slightly long meeting, but. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of money here. I mean, with the exception of that interim tax one, we're we're pretty good. Yeah. I don't think we have yeah. any any systemically over. Yeah. I mean, we did the windows. Well, yeah. We have to. Yeah. yeah. We we held our own. We didn't make any like vast improvements. No. So, uh, any other comments, Ari? No, thank you. Jim, do you have anything? Just want to uh, offer our sympathy to the families of the Marines that were killed in Afghanistan today. Uh, Courtney, do you have any comments? No, just uh, access to that. That's my only comment. Thank you, Jim. Do you have any comments? No, nothing else. Okay, Sue, do you have any comments? Nothing. Okay. Uh, before we adjourn, I see Al, you raised your hand. How come we didn't have a bar shortage? COVID. COVID. How come the rest of these claims bad bar Because people are a lot, other people are a lot less concerned about COVID than apparently we are. Uh -huh. Apparently other places are a lot less concerned around COVID than we are. If, if these people are concerned, I'm more concerned about this COVID, or the crap of to gain power, Why did they close the border? I, 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 I can't, I can't comment to federal level, but Al, the, the, the decision was made local here in the interest of airing on the side of caution for health and safety, which is why the car show was not held this year. They only had a car show except us. Yeah, and that's... We only had one next year. If there's enough of a abatement to the health crisis, yes, I I am a I'm a big fan of the car show. I, I I'm a big fan of the car show. I like the car show, but I don't want to have any large public gatherings. There, there. That's a total other discussion. <laughs> Thank you for the comment again, Al. We can we can talk about that outside of a public meeting, but uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now eight twenty p.m. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Have a good night, everyone.